Okay, so, you know, negotiations are all over film, so are difficult conversations. Today, I'm gonna take a look at a clip that my producers chose for me, and uh, I'll, I guess I'll analyze what I see. Ah, this one's a real classic, Shawshank Redemption. Embarrassingly, I haven't seen it, but please don't give me a lot of for that. Big shot lawyer calls me long distance from Texas. I say, yeah? He says, uh, sorry to inform you, but your brother just died. Oh, damn, Byron, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm not, he was in the <laughs> off years ago, figured him for dead anyway. So anyway, this lawyer fella says to me, your brother died a rich man, oil wells and close to a million bucks. A million oh. bucks? Yeah, incredible how lucky some get. Jeez Louise, you gonna see any of that? 35,000, that's what he left me. Dollars? Yep. Holy that's great, that's like one in the sweepstakes. Isn't it? Some sh what do you think the government's gonna do to me? So a few things worth noting here. Um, clearly, uh, Captain Hadley, right, uh, has gotten a windfall. This is a guy who it seems like um, tends to see the darker side of things than the more optimistic side of things because he's more focused on the tax losses than he is on getting $35,000. But this other character here, Andy, um, what I noticed so far is that he's highly observant. Um, he might not be a particularly good at putting tar on a roof, um, but he is really observant, which is pretty important for good negotiators. Take a big wet bite out of my is what? Poor Barry. Terrible in luck, huh? Crying shame. <laughs> Some people really got it awful. And you nuts. Keep your eyes on your mop, man. And then. Well, all right, you're gonna pay some taxes, but you'll still end up with Oh, what? yeah, yeah, maybe enough to buy a new car, and then what? I gotta pay tax on the car. Repair, maintenance, goddamn kids pestering you to take them for a ride all the time. Then at the end of the year, you figure the tax wrong, you gotta pay them out of your own pocket. I tell you, Uncle Sam, he puts his hand in your shirt and squeezes your Till it's purple. The man never Andy. gets a break. That's the end. You said rich get in yourself, Joe. Keep talking. No. Some brother. Hey! Mr. Adley, do you trust your wife? Oh, that's funny. You're gonna look funnier with no teeth. What I mean is, do you think she'd go behind your back, try to hamstring you? That's it. Step aside, Mert. This is having himself an accident. You don't push him off the roof. Because if you do trust her, there's no reason you can't keep that 35000 What did you say? 35000 35000 All of it. All of it? Every penny. Okay. You got to hand it to Andy. Um, he has chutzpah. He's also really creative. If I were coaching him, I might not start with the line, do you trust your wife? I might start with the, I have an idea about how you could keep that $35,000. Would you like to hear it? But you know what? It's a movie. You better start making sense. If you want to keep all that money, give it to your wife. The IRS allows a one-time only gift to your spouse for up to $60,000. Tax-free? Tax-free. IRS can't touch one cent. You're that smart banker would kill his wife, aren't you? Why should I believe a smart banker like you? So I can end up in here with you? It's perfectly legal. Go ask the IRS. They'll say the same thing. Actually, I feel stupid telling you this. I'm sure you would have investigated the matter yourself. Yeah, I don't need no smart wife killing banker to tell me where the best Of course not. But you do need someone to set up the tax free gift for you. And that'll cost you. A lawyer, for example. Bunch of All right. I suppose I could set it up for you. That would save you some money. If you get the forms, I'll prepare them for you. Nearly free of charge. I'd only ask three beers a piece for each of my co-workers. <laughs> co-workers, get him, that's rich, ain't it? I think a man working outdoors feels more like a man if you can have a- Okay, I wanna just make a comment here because there is this sense, right, that Captain Hadley, um, he's in the conversation, but he likes to be seen as the smart guy. And there's a worry clearly that Andy is coming off as maybe too smart for his own good. So I love this move saying, hey, I'm, I, I feel so bad telling you this 
because you're so smart, I'm sure you would have come to it. It's a way of appealing to that ego interest that clearly Captain Hadley has um, and kind of calming him down. A really great move. Such a great example of a yesable proposition. And also, I really like the appeal to the dignity of working people. Um, somehow tapping into that um, seems like it, at some level is a shared value for Captain Hadley. A bottle of suds. It's only my opinion. Sir. Well, where do we start? Well, first of all, Andy is a good listener. You might say he's an eavesdropper. But maybe a better way to frame it is he's really observant. Because really good negotiators are observant, not just when they're at the negotiation table, but they're observant of the dynamics that are going around in a space. And so even as he's doing this work, right, he's listening and he's observing. A second quality of excellent negotiators that Andy exhibits is being creative, right? So he's really thinking out of the box here, right? I'm in a bad situation. Uh, I have relatively low power. Is there a way I can change that? And this leads to this opportunity to create value in negotiation. So often in negotiation, we talk about sources of value creation. And one of them is when parties have shared interests. Well, there don't seem to be too many shared interests between Captain Hadley and Andy here. But another source of value creation is when parties can identify differences between each other. And here, Andy is able to identify a particular difference, and it's a difference in resources and capabilities. The Captain Hadley has the ability to provide beer or provide relief or provide breaks or food to these prisoners. This is not a resource or capability that Andy has as one of the prisoners. But Andy, by understanding, by listening carefully to one of Captain Hadley's interests, right, which is give as little money as possible to Uncle Sam, you know, in his mind, the evil federal government, that's one of his interests, but he doesn't know how to do it. Andy, who apparently, as I said, I didn't see this movie, he's either, you know, it sounds like he's a tax attorney, but he knows how to use the tax law in a way that will actually save an enormous amount of tax money in a legal way for Captain Hadley. So this difference in resource and capability enables an, an outcome, a negotiated resolution, in a situation that just two minutes before seemed like there was no positive bargaining zone. In the end, uh, Captain Hadley gets Andy to draft documents that will allow him to gift the 35000 to his wife, saving federal taxes. And, of course, uh, Andy and his fellow prisoners get some beer. I want to bring you back to this particular moment in the clip when Andy is about ready to be thrown off the building. And he makes his proposal uh, to draft tax documents in exchange for something that will cost you just a little. To me, this is a really gutsy move. In fact, in that moment, I literally held my breath like, oh my gosh, you're going to ask for something more than your life here? And I think it's brilliant, right? Because what, that's the moment when he realizes, well, there's something that I do want. I want to offer some relief to my fellow prisoners, um, something that will be meaningful to them, and something that you have the ability to provide. Query from a negotiation perspective. Should he have asked for anything? I would definitely say yes. Should he have asked for something more is an interesting question. What are the merits around that? You could imagine that he might say, I will do this for low cost, ask for the beer, see if Captain Hadley reacts, if he seems open, then say, and also this. And maybe even one more time, and also this, until he sees a noticeable flinch from Captain Hadley at which time he probably is like, okay, I've pushed enough here. In all events, right, this is um, such a wonderful negotiation scene of turning a situation that looks like these parties have no zone of possible agreement, and by dint of observation, by dint of understanding interests, and by dint of understanding a difference in resource and capability, 
actually creating value for all the parties. So if you like this React video, keep on watching the next one, which is on Schitt's Creek, one of my most favorite shows. So you're not gonna wanna miss this one from Schitt's Creek.